Welcome to the Real News Network. I'm Mark Steiner. Great to have you all with us. A film was recently released about the controversies surrounding anti-Semitism in the British Labour Party and the expulsion of Palestinian solidarity activists from that party who were accused of anti-Semitism and how this has embroiled the whole body politic in Britain. The film, called Witch Hunt, was directed by our guest, John Pullman, and is supported by the organization Jewish Voice for Labour. At the center of the film is the story of the Labour Party activist, Jackie Walker, who is black and Jewish and a member of Momentum, which is the movement which helped propel Jeremy Corbyn into the leadership and becoming the leader of the British Labour Party. She was expelled from Labour and later reinstated. It was also investigated twice by committees within the party for anti-Semitism. Here's a short segment from the film, uh, it's actually from the trailer. At least one case, that of Jackie Walker, has been shown to be unfounded. And so Jackie has been reinstated. And in her interview on the Today programme, it became clear that her private conversation was taken completely out of context. So you start to begin to think, what is going on here? You know, a party system which is encouraging a kind of Stasi-like sort of um, informing about, about people. And we are joined by the film's director, John Pullman. Uh, so welcome to Real News, John. It's good to have you with us. Great to be here. So talk a bit about this film. You've been a filmmaker for a while. Um, you're based in Scotland. You've traveled across the Middle East. You've done a number of films around Israel and Palestine. Uh, a lot of short documentaries, including uh, Children in Chains. Uh, they were on Palestinian child prisoners uh, in the West Bank. Uh, and The Forgotten, which is about Palestinian refugee camps in Lebanon that, that you visited. So, but, so, but now you've come kind of full circle back to Britain, uh, where you're from, and created this film. Tell me why I and mean, what kind of pushed this film, Witch Hunt. And let me just say, you can see it at witchhuntfilm.org, uh, uh, free to the public. But talk a bit about how this came about. Well, yeah, I mean... The situation in British politics, uh, how it's how it's developed now, was really impossible to ignore. As you say, I mean, I'm an activist, really, uh, particularly interested in, in in the plight of Palestinians, and all my films up to now have really been based around raising awareness, public awareness of, of the issues on the ground there. But this, the, the way that the politics has evolved in recent years, was impossible to ignore, and clearly the the main trigger for this was the election of Jeremy Corbyn to the leadership of the Labour Party, and I believe attempts to stifle criticism of, of Israel or to raise awareness about Palestinian issues has been there for, for years. But this particular um, acute development of attempts to stifle pro-Palestinian voices was impossible to ignore. And for me, um, I mean, the, re the real, the final deciding factor for me was that the narrative about anti-Semitism within the British Labour Party was was uncontested in the in the public space. Um, I mean, not only was was a counter view what the mainstream media are uh, being being denied, but it, it even felt forbidden to suggest there was another counter view. So, I mean, even though I'm just a, a, a grassroots activist, I felt if 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 the mainstream media or other production companies with a budget aren't prepared to take this on, then, then someone has to do it, and that appears to have been me. <laughs> so, so what was the role of the Jewish Voice for Labour in this? Is this has to do with your ability to allow the film to be seen for free? I mean, talk a bit about that just for a minute. Well, sure, yeah. I mean, I, I, mean, I made the film... Um, I mean, I met Jackie Walker a couple of years previously in Edinburgh, where I live. She was, she was doing a tour at the time, and she was refused um, a public venue to have that tour. And so she was making the, making the uh, the event happen on the steps of a church that she'd had the doors uh, closed on her for. But I met her separately and began to to develop a film. I mean, I developed zero budget film, so I just have a, an edit suite at home. I was developing the film. I've got colleagues at Jewish Voice for Labour. I, I showed them some of my work. They realized what I was wanting to do with the material. They realized that some of the material was quite strong and decided at that point to, to support the film. I mean, and it is worth saying, I mean, there's still, I mean, it's still zero budget in a sense. You know, we've raised a bit of money to help um, hire venues and so, and so on. But it's really been the moral support 
and the additional hands on deck for, for publicity and so on, which has really made all the difference. I mean, without Jewish Voice for Labour, there's, there's no way the film would be um, gaining the impetus it, it is now. So, but let's talk a bit about the, what the film gets into at the heart of some of the things here. And I'm, I'm, I'm very curious why you think what's happening internally inside the Labour Party um, and why there's so much controversy around this, why people are actually being investigated inside the party, as Jackie Walker said, almost like the Stasi of East Germany, what that's about, and the role that you see that the Israeli Ministry of Foreign Affairs plays in all this, um, and the, the, this, this huge international battle taking place. I mean, anti-Semitism is real and deep, but what do you think, before we get into some of that, what, what is happening inside the Labour Party allowing this to happen? Well, I think, I mean, you have, a, you have converging interests here, don't you? I mean, certainly there have been coordinated efforts by the Israeli government and its embassy here and various supporting groups to undermine activism around the issue for years. I think the election as the leader of the Labour Party was entirely left left field. I mean, it wasn't, it was out of nowhere. And I don't, I don't think anyone expected this guy to, to get in. But clearly, the moment he did, there was a concerted effort from lots of directions, not just from the Israeli government, who were alarmed at Corbyn's pro-Palestinian principles, but from the right wing of the Labour Party, which has been definitely moving to the right over many, many years. And so I, I think you could you could understand the attempt to undermine Corbyn's basic support base is as much about destroying the left of the party as it is um, chilling free speech on Israel. Although clearly that feeds into the interests of people that definitely do want free speech on Israel to be chilled. So you know you have a you have a you have a, you have a, a convergence of interests here, and I think the very particular. Nexus of that is what given has given rise to this really quite spectacular witch hunt, really within within the British British Labour Party. I mean, it, it's it's become very dirty, very dirty indeed. So let's talk about some of the contradictions here with this. And I, I, I'm going to play a short clip here uh, for you. Um, that um, I think Stephen Mack is his name. This was a Stephen Marks. Yeah. Mark, excuse me. Pardon me. Uh, and he, his very kind of very humorous take. Um, on the Labour Party with the Miliband brothers, both Jews fighting for the leadership of the party and what anti-Semitism is. Let's, let's take a quick look at this. Just over two years ago, we had a leader of the Labour Party who was a Jew who was elected in a straight fight with another Jew who was his own brother. If the Labour Party is so full of anti-Semites that they couldn't find one pure-blooded Aryan to stand against this... <laughs> They must be the most incompetent anti-Semites in the history of the Jewish people. And if only all anti-Semites in history had been that incompetent, the history of the Jews would have been a lot happier. So now that we've seen that, I mean, I said this, it was, if this was humorous, and I kind of enjoyed that little clip, and he's been a very funny man, but, but at the heart of this is something very serious. Because this is where the contradictions, what it seems like people in your film are trying to do, are really especially the Jewish members of the Labour Party, or wrestle with these contradictions, which is no easy trick. I think it's important. I mean, one of the important aspects of the film is to demonstrate to people that voices um, against the criticisms of Corbyn, voices in support of Corbyn, voices who criticise Israel are not all coming from one direction, that there's a very legitimate Jewish voice that rejects the attacks on Corbyn and rejects the attacks on pro-Palestinian supporters. I mean, most of my work takes me into cooperation with incredibly determined uh, and principled uh, British Jewish activists. And I think, I think the important thing for people to understand is that, that there clearly is an uptick in anti-Semitism in, 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 in the Western world at the moment. A lot of right-wing governments are, are beginning to emerge, quite worryingly so. And there are far-right groups that are becoming stronger and more confident. And some of the age-old prejudices against Jewish people 
are beginning to re-emerge. And I, I, I would certainly think it's important to acknowledge that as anti-Semitism emerges again, there will be there will be pockets of people who consider their, themselves to be on the left of, of politics to, to have those those views. What what we have to call out is the attempt to paint the left in general and the British Labour Party in particular as being um, full of these sorts of people. This is where this is where we have to be clear. And just very quickly, there's another quick clip where I want to play that that, that uh, um, has to do with a British woman who is a, a member of the I'm, I'm sorry, a Jewish woman who is a member of the, of the Labour Party. Um, her last name is Levain. Um, and uh, then this interesting interchange between uh, the chief rabbi Sachs uh, and another Jewish activist. And let's take a quick look. This all takes place in an atmosphere of a shift to the right in this country and across Europe. Jeremy Corbyn is a threat. So the people are up from the Blair right to the far right. They've been very happy to use this weapon of anti-Semitism to attack the left. So for me, this was important because she clearly points out that part of this is the contradiction of the rise of the right, but it's being used to slam the left which I find interesting. And then there's this continuing battle over what Zionism and anti-Semitism mean and the intersection of these two. That's why this becomes such a complex subject, uh, I think, for people to tackle just both, both viscerally and intellectually. And, and this is what you're attempting to do here, is to parse this out. Sure. I mean, the film admittedly tries to cover a lot of ground in, in its 62 minutes. I mean, I, I think, but I think it's important that the whole picture is at least pulled together, that people can see the connections between different things. And this, this can describe Corbyn supporters and to undermine pro-Palestinian voices has been part of, an, or at least part of the things playing into that or feeding into that are attempts to redefine what anti-Semitism is. And, there, and the new definition that's certainly gaining ground in, in Britain and, and other countries in Europe seeks to conflate anti-Semitism with anti-Zionism. This is something the film tries to demonstrate, uh, to say that people who are against Zionism, which is an ideology effectively, is anti-Semitic, is, is, clearly, is clearly wrong. Um, but the film also tries to point out what, to explore what Zionism is. I mean, I think an awful lot of people out in the, in the broader world are really confused by all these things. And Zionism is, is an ideology. It's, 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 it's the ideology that was behind the creation of the State of Israel in 1948. And, I mean, it is, it's, it's, a, it's a political system. It's a base of beliefs. And I think that once we get to a point where people are not allowed to have open discussions about this ideology and where it's led, then we've got very serious threats and problems as regards to free speech. And, and, very, and finally, I just wanted a very quick comment here. The, the, the film, as I understand, was banned from being screened in the British Parliament. A, is that true? And B, had there been other ramifications? Yes, we had, um, after the film had been launched, we arranged to have the film shown in Parliament. We feel that actually if there's one uh, group of people that we feel are particularly um, in need of seeing a film like this, it is it is the the <laughs> MPs who serve in the British Parliament. Uh -huh. So um, a colleague of ours, an, an MP who is a very principled anti-racist campaigner and pro-Palestinian, organised to get a room booked for us. Uh, there was a parliamentary Labour Party meeting the week before. It got out that this 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 film had been uh, had been booked to be screened. And I, 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 I saw the threads. I mean, I subsequently saw the line of communications that went from um, a particular MP to the deputy leader, from the deputy leader to the general secretary. And then general secretary phoned this MP and says, you, you're just going to have to pull this film. Um, unfortunately, the, the MP was suspended anyway. But mm. I, I mean, I think that this is just another, in a sense, selling point for the film. We need say, to say to people, what? Why, why is a film like this, which merely seeks to raise important questions, being banned? And this is really, this is the kind of line we're taking now. This is a film that everybody that seeks to, to, to have an opinion on this issue really needs to see and have a discussion about some of the issues that it raises.
Well, John Pullman, I want to thank you so much for being with us and let our uh, viewers know that you can go to witchhuntfilm.org uh, and see the film in its entirety, uh, which we'll of course linking uh, on the site here, but you can also just go there. And John Pullman, thank you so much for joining us. It's been a pleasure to talk with you and good luck with the film. Thank you, Mark. And I'm Mark Steiner here for The Real News Network. Thank you all so much for watching. Take care.